so I quit my job. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Zoe, and with me today is Arcadia, so you might see him around a little bit. Right now, he is up in his cat tree. I don't know if you can see up there. Up there. So you'll probably see him walk back and forth on the futon quite a bit. He likes to walk across, turn around, go back up to the cat tree, turn around, come back down. Anyway. So most of you know, I am a zoo educator. I did go to school for zookeeping. That has been my dream since I was like four or five years old. I never once changed my mind. I wanted to work with meerkats and then in college with Arcadius. I found my love for reptiles, so I wanted to be a herp keeper. A lot of people follow me because I do zookeeper related videos occasionally and everyone knows that I wanted to be a herp keeper for a zoo. So now you're probably wondering what the heck happened that made me quit my job. But because I didn't just quit my job, I quit my zookeeper dream. Can I help you, sir? I'm trying to film a video. I'm trying to film a video. Can I help you? So this wasn't a decision I took lightly. This is something I've been thinking about for a very long time now. Um, this actually started way back when we went on our cruise in February, March, February, when we went on our cruise in February. Um, since then, it's kind of been pondering in my mind and I've had some thoughts here and there. So I'm going to explain everything. I'm going to explain my thoughts. I'm going to explain how I got to this point, why I made the decision I did, and what's next for me. I told you guys a couple times that there's some big changes coming. Um, so this is the video where I explain it all. Yeah. So basically, the just the main thing that describes my situation the best is something that was said to me when I went to the dentist after I told my parents that I didn't want to be a zookeeper anymore. Um, this was about a month, month and a half ago. Um, I told them I didn't want to be a zookeeper anymore. And the next day I went to the dentist and my oral hygienist, um, I was talking to her about it and she told me, you know, you, we all go to school, we all grow up thinking that, you know, we want such and such job, we go to school for that job, but we don't actually know what that job is like until we're doing it. It's so, like, I could do all the internships in the world. You guys know I've done a ton of internships for zoos and an aquarium and that's all fine and great, but it's totally different when you're actually in the job. But you don't know that until you're actually in the job. So that kind of made me feel a little better about the whole situation because it was unsettling for me. It was so the decision wasn't something I took lightly. It was a hard decision to make. Um, and the reason it was so hard was because, like I said, it's been my dream since I was like five. So. It's hard to change your mind and give up something that's been your whole life. Like my whole entire life has revolved around being a zookeeper. All like the gifts I was ever given was revolved around being a zookeeper. My college career was it revolved around being a zookeeper. So it's like my whole life has been revolved around being a zookeeper. So to suddenly say that's not the life I want, it was tough to say that out loud. Um, so basically, like I said, it's been something I've been thinking about since the cruise. So it has been quite a while. It's been almost a year of thinking about this. And so the breaking point, what was the breaking point? So basically the main reason that I decided to leave my career in the zoo is because of all the things I was having to give up. So growing up, I knew that I would have to sacrifice a lot to be a zookeeper. 
and to five-year-old Zoe and to teenage Zoe, it was all worth it. But now that I'm here having to give things up and it's, it's much more real and it's not something that I want. So basically this career was causing me to have to sacrifice my relationship, my skating career, my coaching career, eventually sacrificing holidays with my family. I'm sacrificing being close to my family and to my friends. I'm sacrificing being able to travel a lot, which is kind of how it started back during the cruise because I found out that I absolutely love to travel and I love to see animals out in the wild. And that's all stuff that I can't really do too much working as a zookeeper. So obviously the real breaking point was when it was causing me to sacrifice my relationship. Um, Cause that was something I never in a million years wanted to, to ruin. And then it all just became really kind of overwhelming how like much working in a zoo was, I don't want to say ruining my life, but ruining my life because I wasn't able to skate. I can't coach. I can't take kids to competition. I can't travel. I was away from my boyfriend, my family, my friends. I've been living down here alone with no friends for half a year now. It's very lonely. It's very boring at times. And it kind of sucks. <laughs> And you guys have heard me say a million times, zookeeping is something you get into for the love of animals, not for the pay. And that has been very real. Um, being down here and having to live on my own and pay for everything on my own, I have been living paycheck to paycheck. I've mentioned that I've been budgeting. Um, so I have done that, but it's still, it's still tough. Um, and it's not entirely something that I want to do. You know, I. It's not entirely something I want to have to do the rest of my life. <laughs> like obviously I'll still always budget to a certain point to make sure I'm saving money and not spending money unnecessarily, but I don't want to have to budget because if I don't, I won't be able to afford to feed myself. <laughs> and then you know the more that I thought about it, the more I realized that when I was little, I wanted to take care of animals. And then when I got Arcadius, I realized I want to take care of reptiles. And now that I have all of these reptiles and I have practically my own little reptile zoo here, I am satisfied. I don't feel like I need to be a zookeeper and take care of animals because I have my own animals to take care of. So it's like that kind of satisfied that need that I had to be a zookeeper and take care of animals. So I was like, okay, I have this. So why am I paying? Why am I getting paid minimum wage to do it far away from my friend's family, boyfriend, and not be able to skate? Like, it, the cons outweighed the pros of working in a zoo for me at this point. So this particular job, um, I would have left anyway. I was planning on finishing out my lease and then finding a new job somewhere because the job itself there's a lot of issues and politics that are going on. Um, I've been warned by zookeepers before that there's a lot of politics in zoos, but I'm pretty good at just kind of ignoring everything, except in this particular job as an educator, I'm kind of stuck in the middle of all of it. So I see a lot of it and a lot of it has affected me and it has affected my job um, because, you know, we don't take care of the animals. We're not the keepers for our animals. We're just the educators. Um, we're one of the only zoos I know of where the education staff doesn't take care of the education animals. And it's caused a lot of issues and a lot of lack of communication. And it's just, it's beginning to become, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just not working, basically. So when my lease finished, I was planning on moving out and finding another job at a zoo somewhere. Um, but obviously I'm leaving a lot sooner because I've only been here for six months. So that leads me into future plans and why I am leaving now. So before I get into that though, I do want to say being a zoo educator is a super rewarding job. I will have a whole nother video on that at some point. Um, so I don't have to go into that in this video, but 
the job itself, being a zoo educator itself, isn't what didn't play a part in me wanting to quit or leave the zoo field. Being a zoo educator is, it's amazing. There's a lot of uh, experiences that go along with it that you only get as a zoo educator. Um, so like I said, I'll have a whole other video about being a zoo educator later on. So anyway, my new plans. So the reason that I am quitting now and not waiting until the end of my lease, I got out of my lease because my landlords are freaking awesome. And they said, you know, we just want the best for you. We want you to be happy. This is a good opportunity for you. You know, see you later. So they're awesome. So the reason I'm leaving now is I did get another job and it's actually a job you guys are familiar with. So the nature center that I worked for back home, one of the guys that worked there, you guys know I've mentioned it before, um, there's only like four full-time naturalists or three full-time naturalists, the director, and then a couple of part-time staff. I was one of the part-time staff. Um, they replaced me when I left. And one of the full-time staff is he got a call to go into an academy for a law enforcement job. So they had an opening for a full-time position and the director texted me just keeping me in the loop because you know that's what they do every time something happens they text me to keep me in the loop and she told me and that was kind of what my plan was looking like for when I quit. Um, I had been meaning to email her and just be like hey you know I want to move back home I want to be closer to my family and my boyfriend and my friends and the whole nine yards everything I said to you guys I was planning on emailing her and letting her know um, so that she could keep me in mind if there was ever a chance that they would be hiring someone new. And so when she texted me that, I was like, oh my gosh, wait, you know, I want to email you. I wanted to let you know, like, please, like, I wanted to beg you to take me back. And she was basically like, well, the job is yours. When can you get back? <laughs> so I told the issue that I was having right now is I couldn't afford to move out. Cause like I said, here I am living paycheck to paycheck. I was putting about a hundred dollars or so away from each paycheck when I could um, into my savings to save up to be able to afford like first month's rent and a security deposit somewhere new back home. Um, so I was trying to save up to move and I'm like, I, cause I can't, I didn't think I could move back home because my sister took my room and so her old room became the guest bedroom and it's much smaller than my bedroom was. And I've already moved out. I've been living on my own. I felt like I'd be going backwards to move back in with my parents. So that's why I was saving up. And so I told her that I'm like, well, I wasn't really planning on coming back until like April. But she said that for me to have the job, I'd have to come back ASAP because we do skiing and snowshoeing at the nature center. And it's the busiest time of the year. So they really, really needed someone. So I was like, okay, I have to make this happen because she was also offering me a lot more money than I make at, well, than I would ever make at a zoo. Um, so the pay increase was a no-brainer on accepting the job and moving the heck out of here and I told her that I wanted to go to Iguana Fest in April that's my plan and that's why I wanted to be moved out of here by April basically um, and she told me if I came back now that she could give me that wage that um, salary whatever you want to call it and that she would give me the time off in April that I wanted to go to Iguana Fest. So I was like, okay, like this is obviously something I can't turn down. So I talked to my parents about it and we decided that I would move back in to their house um, just so that I can get resituated, save up money again. Um, and now that we've talked about it more, it'll probably be a little bit more of a long-term thing than I was planning. I was thinking a couple months but might be a little bit longer than that because now we've been talking about the fact that since I don't have to pay rent, I don't have to pay utilities, that I can take all that money and put it towards a new car because we're pretty sure my car isn't gonna make it through the winter. Um, and I can put it towards my student loans because I did go to a very expensive college to get a four year degree to make minimum wage the rest of my life at a zoo. So, I'm really in debt. <laughs> so we figured now would be a good time for me to just put all this money towards these things, my student loans and a new car. 
So on top of working at the nature center, obviously I'm going to keep up with YouTube and pursue that. And I have my Etsy shop that most of you know about called Herpetology and it has been going so phenomenally well. So I'd love to keep growing that and go to expos with it. And you guys know that I have a passion for reptile education. I've talked about doing reptile education programs before. It was at the nature center that I was doing that. So going back to the nature center, I would be able to do programs again with my animals. But ultimately my dream goal now is to eventually have my own reptile education business. Because like I said, being a zoo educator was super rewarding. So it would be so much cooler and so much better to be able to do my, have my own thing, be my own boss, set my own rates. Because one thing I've also learned is I hate working for other people. I really do. I hate working nine to five. I hate working for other people. I want to be my own boss, basically. Um, and the nature center is pretty much the next best thing to that because the director is very laid back. Everyone there is very nice. There's not a lot of employees, so we're very, it's a very like family feel, uh, which I really like. So if I have, you know, if I have to work a job, I have to work for someone and I have to work nine to five, that's the type of place I would want to be at. Somewhere that feels like a family, um, somewhere that's not super stressful, somewhere that's just very accepting of everyone and everyone's ideas and what they want to do. And it doesn't feel like a hierarchy, basically. <laughs> no politics. That was a great place to work. and I loved my job there, so now I'm very excited to be going back. So on top of all those money-making plans I have for myself, I also obviously want to travel. And I want to volunteer with organizations that help with wildlife conservation initiatives. So that is something I really, really, really want to do. Instead of working at a zoo with animals, I want to travel and see the animals in their native habitats and help with conservation initiatives. Because I can be at a zoo working with an endangered species all I want, picking up its poop, but I'm not going to feel like I'm making as much of a difference as I would be traveling and volunteering with those species in the wild. So that's kind of where the mindset went after the cruise and it all kind of built up inside i didn't talk to anyone about it and then shit started to hit the fan and then i was like okay like this is real i need to talk to people about this i need to really accept that this is how i'm feeling and that this is where my life is going to go because i'm going to be miserable if i stick with this career path just because it's been what I've wanted my whole life and what I went to school for and now I'm in debt because of it. So I felt like I had to do it. But you know, now I'm realizing I don't have to do anything I don't wanna do. Like we're talking about my career, my lifelong career, something I'm gonna be doing for years. And I wanna make sure that I'm gonna love what I'm doing and that I'm not gonna be miserable all the time. So yeah, that's the big announcement I had. That's why I didn't really do a Christmas apartment tour because I did start moving things home already. Um, you may have noticed in my first Hermes video when I kind of showed you guys what decorations I had, my small reptile shelf was missing with Tootsie and Penelope. Um, so they are home. I did bring some of the snakes home already. My brother's watching them. And my last day of work is going to be Friday the 13th because I have to be extra, of course. And so that weekend after, I'll be moving back home. So you guys will get to see me move all over again with my animals. And then I'll probably have a Christmas room tour when I am moved back home. So that's the plan. It's like I said, big life changes. <laughs> I wasn't planning on having to make this video so soon, but the nature center job came and I couldn't pass it up. So here it is, here's this video. So thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry if I upset any of you by announcing that I'm leaving the zoo field. You know, I'm still going to the nature center. There's still animals there. You know, they are handing animal care over to me when I get back. So, you know, it's still, there's still animal care and conservation because a lot of New York native species are endangered. So there's still a lot of conservation and animal stuff there. It's just not zoo animals. 
but of course and I still have my animals and I still want to do reptile education programs so there's still aspects of the zoo world that are going to be in my life I'm just not going to be in a zoo so anyway I'm gonna wrap up this video thank you guys again for watching and I will see you for the next video